this morning we've got up and uh, headed about uh, 25 miles to the uh, west and uh, we've come to a uh, village of Dunblane uh, to visit the Dunblane Cathedral. Gothic Cathedral with vaulted ceilings. Uh, yeah, uh, you can see it in the background there. And Jen, wave Jen. Uh, there you go. And uh, we're gonna go and head in and have a look. All the headstones in the church graveyard here. And uh, the big cathedral here in the, uh, in the background. Lots of stained glass windows. Looking forward to going inside and checking it out. So we're in a 12th century cathedral, Gothic cathedral with vaulted roofs. A uh, gentleman's just given us a whole history of it and I can't remember a whole lot, but uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll wander through and have a look. Have a look at these beautiful stained glass windows. Beautiful old Bible here. Up here where the choir seats are. On either side. And it's gonna be a little bit hard to see here, but the, uh, the big pipe organ as well. at the stained glass windows. There's the main pulpit and altar at the top up here. And a massive stained glass window here at the east end. This here is a Memorial to um, Bishop Clement, who was the bishop who rebuilt this uh, cathedral uh, in 1237. He went to Rome to petition the Pope to get more money to be able to build a church that would serve the community. Inside the little door off to the side. I don't know what they call this room, but uh, more beautiful stained glass. Really nice pictures. You can see the vaulted roofs here. And there's a little door that leads out to the outside. There's Jen in the doorway running away. The large stone columns. The gentleman was saying that the, the columns are too big for what's above it, indicating that uh, we think that they were supposed to build like a whole nother level on there because these columns couldn't support that weight whereas the weight that's on them at the moment is uh, well it's quite light comparatively speaking
this is the great bell and the one to the left is the lesser bell and the great bell was founded in 1612 that's really old 1612 the lesser one is a little bit younger it was 1687 this wall here lists the bishops and ministers who through the centuries have served God in this place. So there's history here that goes back, and you probably can't see it because of the angle, but goes back to, there you go, S. Blaine in 602. Wow, that's a long time ago. 602. Wow, that's amazing. Just up here on the right is the bell town. It's the oldest part of the uh, of the cathedral here. It was part of the or it was part of the original church that was here before the cathedral was even built. That's this building here to the right there. That goes up. That's the old bell town, and that's the oldest part. There is the original bell tower. We're not allowed in it at this point because of uh, the small confined space with COVID. But uh, you can see in there. And then there are steps that go up over that side there that go up the bell tower. On the outside here, you can see the bell tower. And the, uh, the cathedral itself here. Just lovely. It's been a really enjoyable morning there. This afternoon, we're heading up to Doon, which is a town about five miles away. And uh, we're heading there to see the Doon Castle. So about five miles up the road from the cathedral. We are now here at Doon Castle. But we'll just stop and grab a couple of pickies of it from outside here. You have to uh, pre-book everything these days because they're only letting a limited number of people in. And uh, the other downside about COVID that we have found here uh, is that there are very few public bathrooms around so if you need to go you're in trouble so this is the dune castle uh unfortunately we can't do anything about the uh the blue signs that's uh, really annoying oh and it's there you go brightened it up a little bit uh the blue signs they're all saying oh they're all out for COVID and that uh, and there's some scaffolding and, and fencing up over there as well, which is a bit annoying, but you take what you can get. We're going to go in. We've got our tickets booked, so we're going to head in and have a look here at Dune Castle. So the castle was built in the 1300s and was a stronghold of Robert Stuart. Robert was the second son of King Robert of Scotland. Strong stone walls. And the main castle building over here. It's quite tall. And uh, we're going to go in and check it out. Jen's just standing over here at the well. And there's some reconstruction work going on as well. So heading up the stairway here, this takes us to the servery. Go inside and have a look. This area in here was the kitchen. And 
and uh, we're in the reception hall here at the moment. We have to go in here to the kitchen and, and have a look around. So this area here was the kitchens. Big arch roof here. And this area here is a gigantic fireplace. It's massive, massive big fireplace here. And uh, back in the time of the castle, there would have been a huge fire going and probably a suckling pig or something along those lines. So this is inside the fireplace, looking right up. If I move back this way, you can see a little bit of the light at the very top, where the, out the chimney up there. So, big fireplace here. Heading through here into the great room. This area here would have been where all the feasts and things happened. Maybe the ruler would have been sitting up the end up there. You can see the big brazier in the middle to keep it warm. Steps leading from the Great Hall down to, well, who knows where. Could be the dungeons, could be, uh, could be anywhere down there. Narrow and really steep. And on the other side, just here, a little hidey hole for something. Not really sure what, but uh, and then back out here to the, the main hearth and the great hall. Jen taking some photos. This small step up is where the high table would have been, where the, uh, the ruler would have sat and his honored guests on the top section up here. Heading through this way and up a spiral staircase. Up the spiral staircase here. Well, if I just turn around here, you can have a look in this hall, which was probably the, the throne room. It kind of looks like that. Don't really know what this uh, what this room is or could be. Wait, there's a sign over here. Let's have a read. See what it says. One of the brightest and most impressive rooms in the castle. A private space for the duke to entertain. Could have been in his bedroom. And. Uh, uh, seated room, just uh, entertainment space where you could sit and talk to guests and people. It's really quite nice and bright up in here. You can see the ceilings are massively high. And over there would have been a fireplace. And if you look out the window here, you can see the battlements. The top of the walls. Oh, it's a little bit bright. The sun's straight out there. This section here, although not very deep, was a fireplace. Uh, you can see a hole out the top for the chimney. 
coming around here to a window where he would have been able to look out over his fields in the area, the river below. Beautiful out there. There's the battlements just there. The top of the walls of the castle. And this little doorway here leads through. Unfortunately, we can't get out to explore out there. They've blocked it off, but it leads through. And he, the Duke would have been able to run out here and, and walk along the castle walls. Behind the Duke's chamber, there's another spiral staircase going down. And that's where we're heading, down the spiral staircase. So this room is the seat of power where all the governing would have happened. People would have been brought in before them on charges and uh, uh, landowners would have been coming to pay their taxes and uh, all that sort of thing. This here is a trapdoor and leads straight down into the pit dungeon and they would have um, criminals stand on that and if they were found guilty they'd drop the trapdoor and the people would fall down into the dungeon. A literal fall from grace. Here's the table that the, uh, the Duke would rule from. Coat of arms up here on the wall. Big lights. It's very cool. So just down at the foot of the castle, the river running along. Beautiful little path through the trees and the castle up here on the top of the hill. It seems like the castle is on a bit of a peninsula. There's a river running down each side of the castle. And this is the one on the other side here. There's a few men who are fishing. Don't know what luck they're having. They look like they're trout fishing. People walking dogs and stuff. So I've just walked around to the other side of the castle just to get a view, see what it looks like. It's pretty awesome. So this is Dun Castle. We'll uh, head back to the car now and get some lunch and look at the map and see what we can do next. There's Jen, wave Jen. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, see you in a bit. So driving along, heading back to Perth and we uh, saw this memorial and uh, statue. So we decided to stop and check it out. Uh, this statue is uh, in memorial to David Sterling. Now, David Sterling is the founder of the Special Air Services, or the SAS, here in the UK. So, uh, they used to be called the Commandos. Uh, they're now called the uh, Special Air Services, the SAS. So, this is uh, a statue in memorial to him. This is David Sterling, who founded the Special Air Services, or the SAS, in 1941.